part two will be a live recording of the game between Carlson and Artemiev, but part one will be the opening theory to this game. How not to play the Queen's Gambit? Is this an unfair title for this video? On Lee Chess, Magnus Carlsen took on top Russian player world number 11 in Blitz, Vladislav Artemiev, in a 3 minutes plus 2 second per move Blitz game. Part 1 is the opening theory to the Queen's Gambit accepted. Part 2 is the live recording of the game. If you are new here, hello, my name is William. Let's begin. Rook d4, Queen d4. Oh, he plays it well. Rook c3, see if Carlsen goes for it. Queen c2 might be... Oh, he plays it amazing. Come on. Is this going to work out? I don't think it works out in his favour. But still a pretty cool line. GF4, Rook B3 with Rook takes B7. Check. D4, D5, C4, D takes C4. This is the line I'm going to suggest. And it's the line we're going to see in the game. Magnus Carlsen versus Vladislav Artemiev. E4, getting the centre. Two pawns. In a perfect world, White will get his pawn back. Bishop takes c4. And he has the center, but Black attacks White's center with knight f6. e5, knight d5. White has a lot of space, but Black has the d5 square. Bishop takes c4. Knight b6. In this position, there are two options. The bishop can come back to b3, or it can go to d3. I'm going to suggest, just like what Carlsen played against Artemiev, Let's go with bishop b3, keeping an eye on the f7 pawn. Black gets his knight out to put pressure on this pawn. Knight and queen attack this pawn, so white will find a way to defend it. White could play knight f3 or knight e2, but Carlsen plays bishop e3. Defending the pawn which defends your e5 pawn. Why has more space in the center? If you play knight f3, bishop f5, knight c3, e6, it looks perfectly fine. But the point is, I don't want you to put the knight on f3 because you cannot get this pawn moving. Don't do it. After knight c6, let's defend with bishop e3. Black gets his bishop out. Now, if he plays a bad move like e6... I would go far as to say this is a blunder because you are just locking in this bishop. There's no need to do that. This piece will be a problem piece the entire game. Knight c3, bishop e7, knight e2, castle, castle. And in this position, white has very easy attacking options. This is what happens when black castles kingside. Knight can come to g3. It can even come to f5. But when it is on g3, it can support f4, f5. This bishop can come back to c2, eyeing h7 along with the queen. So we have a bishop-queen battery. White's attacking moves are easy and very fast. After bishop e3, let's say black plays a good move, getting the bishop outside of the pawn chain, putting the bishop on f5. So if this bishop ever retreats, there's a chance to swap it off. Knight c3, e6. If we look at the blue arrows, black has so many ways that he's controlling this square, the d5 square. Knight, pawn, queen, but also the other arrow was if this knight went to b4 and then it comes and sits itself on d5. Knight g e2. We got a few ideas for white. Recall, I do not want you to put the knight here because you want to play knight e2 to give yourself some attacking options later. When the knight is on this square, let's discuss. Knight defends knight. It also defends your pawn along with the center. From this spot, the knight can come to g3 to attack the bishop. But also, when you put the knight here, you can get this pawn moving f4. Knight e2 played. Queen d7. Black wants to castle, queenside. Castle, castle. And in these kind of queen's gambit positions, we get very exciting play. Who is going to get there first? This is the kind of chess I want to play. And hoping this is also the kind of chess you want to play. Opposite side castling leads to a very exciting game. D4, D5, C4, Queen's Gambit accepted by Kona Vlad. 
very sharp line in the queen's gambit. Bishop back to d3 as possible to stop the bishop coming out. Bishop e3 now. So bishop defends this. Black center, white center might be a bit overextended because black can set up like this. You go e6 and you've got a knight and a queen as long as a along with a pawn controlling that square. So it's an overextension. Knight e2, planning to go knight g3, possibly hitting the bishop. Then you can castle as well. Castle first. Okay, very exciting game. Queen c1. What's the idea of that? Queen does face the king. Idea maybe the rook can come over to d1. Other than that, I'm not actually sure what queen c1 is about. Wow, what does that do, queen c1? Okay, king b8 played, rook d1, okay, cool. That was the point, so rook along the d file. I don't think this push is coming, unless it is. d5 could be a push. If d5, take, 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 queen e6, queen, no, no, not queen e8. So that's interesting if this push even happens. I mean, that's why you play rook d1. Maybe this push does take place. a4, no. Okay, a5 might be a threat that to dislodge that knight. So black might play a5 himself. Wow, knight a5 instead. Didn't expect that. That's a cool idea. Knight coming into c4, offering a trade. Knight could sit well. Actually, no, sorry. If you go knight c4, then e5, kicking away that knight. Knight into the middle, right. I quite like black's position. I think Kuna Vlad has a great position. I think he's outplayed Magnus in this opening. Take, queen takes, and look at the squares. That belongs to black. Go on outpost, even the knight can come in. You could offer an exchange queen here but then maybe queen e4 so maybe you don't do that knight sits well here attacking the queen possibly d5 knight h5 as well attacking this pawn now queen b3 offering a trade i don't know if white wants to do this because then the rook comes back so carlson does not trade queens you don't want to take because after this this knight is very strong attacking the rook and attacking the pawn on d4 how to put more pressure on this pawn in the future rook d7 rook d8 and black is for choice rook b1 rook d7 very difficult position for white to play queen c4 once again offering a trade so maybe carlson will play queen f3 queen g4 attacking this one of those options look good now if you don't do it well, if that happens, maybe black will actually play knight b3, and then the rook can go to b1. Now the knight sits quite well there, so I don't know if he even wants that. Now the other option is to do this, encourage black to come forward. So you, Carlson might be thinking take, take, and then b3. Because if take, 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 then you get this end game. So maybe Carlson is thinking of that. Or rook c1 was possible to attack the queen, forcing an exchange that way. Now, to deliberately pin yourself like this, I think something's gone wrong for him. Even though in this position, the next move could be rook c3, because then take, take, and then you've got a rook on that file. So rook d1 and, okay, interesting. Rook c3, I would strongly consider rook c3 here because then you take and then you can take back with the knight. So then g5 is now a weakness. Now if rook c3 maybe he goes queen a4, but then knight d3. And then this is a bit weak. Ah, oh, knight d4 though. Okay, I have an idea. If rook c3, queen a4, queen c2. If gf4, rook b3. Because then it threatens rook takes b7, check. Queen c2, really cool tactical sequence coming up. I was very pleased to see it live, as I explained during the live recording. G takes f4 played. Queen c2, queen and rook both attack the knight. 
Black takes the knight, rook takes b3. Now we're threatening rook b7, check. So in the game, black played a very normal move, king a8, just getting out of the way. There's an absolutely incredible move in this position I just want to show you. b6, not possible because rook takes b6, check, and then you lose your queen. You don't play king a8, you play the inhuman b5, which looks ridiculous because you're just pushing a pawn in front of your king. You've got a rook facing your king, no way. How can this ever be good? This bishop is being attacked, so white can take the pawn and now c5. This is the idea. Using the pin on the d-file, this is a wonderful computer variation. If you take this pawn, you are lost. Rook takes rook, check. Queen takes. Rook d8, game over. Rook attacks queen. Queen needs to defend rook. But if the queen comes off the back rank, we are in with check. And that is game over. Queen, wherever it defends, it can go to f3. Queen a1 is mate on the back. Incredible variation pointed out by Stockfish. So I'm glad I got the chance to share it in this video. Artemiev is a human being. He just got out the way with his king. King to a8. So you solve that, maybe you move the king out of the way and then bishop f4. But then rook d4. Rook d4, queen d4. Oh, he plays it well. Rook c3, see if Carlson goes for it. Queen c2 might be... Oh, he plays it amazing. Come on. Is this going to work out? I don't think it works out in his favour. But still a pretty cool line. Gf4, rook b3 with rook takes b7. Check. King c8. But then rook c1, c6. Yeah, I think this works out for black, actually. It's a cool line, but we'll see. Interesting. Is knight c5 possible? Because if rook takes, boom, boom, take, take. But then white's um, winning. He takes first. Okay, rook b3, threatening this check. I'm really pleased I saw this. Yeah, king eight. Yeah, this was the problem, rook d4. Good. So I, I feel like I evaluated this long variation correctly. And I think black's good. Unless I'm totally wrong, you see. He can't take it because queen d1 check actually picked up the rook. So a sensible move here for black was queen d5 check, c6, solid. Black is better here. So I think... Magnus is in big trouble. A really cool way to stop white moving is to play this move, queen a4. You are using the pin on the rook. You stop the white rook moving. But really, it's all about stopping the white queen moving. Later, we will see the queen came into h7, took that pawn, and the position just fell apart. Queen a4 is a wonderful move. Very difficult for white to move. He might have to go rook c3, but then all the pressure is gone. Take, take, c5. Time to get your three against one, queenside majority, moving. Rook f3. Queen d5, stop that rook moving, even though it can't move at the moment. Gotta move. Queen d5, queen, okay, h5, come on. c4. Well, I'll take on b2 now. Okay, this is getting really messy. Yeah, something's, something's happened. Queen e4 pinning. So rook d3 is an idea, but you can't do it at the moment because queen b8. So king comes forward. Right, 37 seconds against 8. Rook f8 is serious. Why didn't you go rook f8? Oh... Rook d3 played, and in this moment, Carlsen missed the tactic just to pick up the bishop. In the game, he just went queen f5. Very logical. Offering a queen trade. At the same time, you protect the rook, and you attack the queen. But, after rook d3, there was a cool tactic. Check. King a7. Check. And if you move the king, queen can go back to f8, defending the rook. That's cool. b6. Let's say. Then queen f8. 
fate. Defending. Okay, now tables have turned. E6 is real. Is it? Well, take, take. And then queen e6. Yeah, something's... H4, okay. It's three against four. Bishop c1 is there. It's a bit negative, bishop c1. Bishop e3, okay. Setting up a mate. Yikes. What a turnaround. Queen d2. Attack from the back and defend. Queen d4. Take. That's it. King h2. Queen c3. He just gives it up. h6. Push, maybe. Check, and then h7. It's too fast. Wow, what a turnaround. h6. Queen takes pawn. Check first, and then push. In this position, black resigned. If we played on a few more moves, c3. Queen. You're not even close to getting a queen. c2. You drop your own queen. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this type of video where part one is the opening theory and part two is the application of that opening theory in a real game. Thanks a lot for watching all the way until the end. If you enjoyed this type of video, why not give it a like and subscribe to the channel at the same time. If you press the bell, that means YouTube will let you know when I release a new video. Have a nice week and I'll see you later.